having the child with their left foot kick the ball against the wall and when it comes back, stop it. So let me just turn this way. But with his left foot, kick the ball against the wall and then as it comes back, stop it. Kick it and stop. Kick it and stop. It looks very monotonous, but for the child, that's actually a great stimulation for their brain. You'll see sometimes, I had one gal came to me, that had come to me and she said, do you think it's possible that my child's cognition improved by just playing soccer this summer? The answer is absolutely. That type of movement, going down the field and learning a different skill that's a big or a large motor skill actually develops brain. So having the child just do this type of an activity actually helps that ADD brain to start to focus. So he has to kick it and stop it. Kick it and stop it. Kick it and stop it. Okay. Is that with, your... with his left. Okay. I'm doing it this direction so the camera can see us, but with oh, the left, okay? okay. <laughs> so yes, stick with, as we're trying to do this, it's left-sided activities. Left figures of eight, drawing with their left hand, getting a whiteboard and having them draw big numbers with their left hand, okay? Painting with their left hand, kicking the ball with their left foot and stopping it, okay? Having dad go to the park, take the kid to the park, get a soccer ball, Pass the ball from the right to his left and make the kid kick the soccer ball into the goal with his left foot. Okay? At first it will feel so discoordinated to the child, it'll be very frustrated. And it'll be frustrating for dad. So get three balls so he's not chasing them all day. <laughs> Pass it over and just gently, it's not, we're not playing, you know, Messi or whoever the, Ronaldo or whoever the great soccer players are right now. We've got to just treat the child as the child is. Okay, so gently, even if it's at first, just setting the ball there and letting him run and kick it with his left foot in. All right. So let's look then, from this, we want to create maturation, but when we see demise of the frontal lobes, that's dementia. And we've talked about before, one of the quickest screens for loss of frontal lobe integrity, so these... These areas have all these little gyri and fissures. Uh, when we look at this frontal lobe, what we're really looking for is then when we just take and stroke the palm. Remember the palmomental reflex? We talked about that before. A few of you have heard it before, right? So the palm of the hand, when we stroke the palm with something sharp, Okay, when we stroke the palm, what happens is the chin will actually quiver. So you'll see the chin will quiver. So that's a sign? That's a sign of frontal lobe demise. Okay? Or change in the frontal lobes. So you'll stroke the palm, okay. and when you stroke the palm, you can stroke it up or down. Okay. Okay, so you just stroke the palm. Does that be the left? No, no. The nope, okay. either side. Okay, and you stroke each side because it's going to be an indication of one side frontal lobe demise. Okay, but stroke the palm, and what you'll see is as you stroke the palm, the chin will actually raise. Okay, so you can't have them talking, they'll sit there and try to talk to you. But do this as an experiment. When you go and volunteer at the care center sometime, just walk in and open somebody's hand, just as you're going through, and just take a pen and just stroke their palm like this. Okay, you get just a little tiny quiver right there. <laughs> Just a little tiny quiver. And once you make them aware of it, it'll suppress. Okay? In some people. But it's just a very, very, very early indication of change. Now, here's the neat thing. We can actually change that. And I'll show you that tonight, too. Okay? So it's not all lost. Right? That, that's where we start to see the change. Right? Um, everybody good to that point? So it is an early indication of that. Frontal, frontal lobe change. Frontal lobe. Yep, demise. Yep, and this is called the palm. Palmo. This is the mentum, right? The thinker, remember the thinker, the statue? Not the high school poser. <laughs> right? This is the thinker, and this is the mentum of the chin. You'll see the mentum of the chin will raise. Okay, so it's a palmo mental reflex. And when you stroke the palm, you'll see the chin will quiver. Okay? Everybody good to that point? So let's kind of free up the board and get a little bit more information for us.
in the brain, when we look at brain, the brain has this amazing hierarchy, okay? There is, in essence, a, a window, if you will, in the moving upward to the interpretation centers of the brain. We'll just call these the interpretation centers of the brain. Okay, and from the window there has to be a decision, am I going to actually project or move information? Let's actually do it this way. Let's make a window, and then from the window, the window takes information in, and from that then there is a projector. And the projector then, Remember the old reel-to-reel -reel movies? Most people won't even know what this is, but there used to be a reel-to-reel -reel movie. And that reel-to-reel -reel movie then has to project onto a big screen, and then the big screen can appreciate it, or people can view that and interpret it, right? Before the window there, though, there has to be something that actually keeps the window clean or allows information to come through to the window. So there's got to be then some type of a a location or supporting structure that will actually, let's say, hold the window up, okay, or keep the window from collapsing. So let's just say that these are some little pillars here, if you will, okay. Let's kind of put some names to this, if you will. <clears throat> in the brain, the window of information coming in, the interpretation of the information coming in, Everything has to come through the thalamus, and the thalamus, this we'll call the window the eyes, and then we'll call the thalamus the projector. We'll call the frontal lobes the screen, and the supporting structures down here we'll call joints, we'll call them um, joint, actually let's call them joint receptors. Okay, and then we'll call these pathways and since we did this in black we'll actually call this a black substance or substantia nigra. Now this is a, a big anatomy lesson for us tonight, but I, I really want to kind of give you an awareness of what cognition is about, okay? Because the more that we can actually understand cognition, the better off that we can understand then how or why certain things happen, okay? Because when information comes into the body through joint receptors, Part of our human expression, the most important sensation in our body is our awareness of our position. Okay? If my eyes are closed and I touch my nose with my finger, that is a joint position. My body has an awareness of where it is in space. If I lose that joint awareness and I can't find when I'm asked to touch my nose, there's a problem. Okay? My brain has lost that joint position sense or my awareness of gravity. If I close my eyes and I feel like I'm going to fall over, my body's going to start to do certain things to try to prevent that fall, right? And you've seen those types of positional presentations. So as we look at this brain, what we're really looking at then, first of all, is what is its awareness of joint position perception? Is my hand bending upward or is it bending downward? Is there pain as I move that joint or does it move easily? The more I experience pain, the more that this gating mechanism becomes more aware and I'm constantly experiencing pain is going to make me want to withdraw or change then my human expression, right? If it hurts me to walk, am I going to keep walking? Not likely, right? If it hurts me to ride my bicycle, am I going to keep riding my bicycle? Not likely. And each thing that I kind of check off I don't want to do anymore takes away from my humanness. Okay? Or let me say it this way. A lady who was 83 years old came to me and she said, I have back pain. 
Okay, how can we help you? Well, my knees are hurting a little bit too. What is it keeping you from doing? Well, I still ski three times a week and I want to continue to be able to do that. 83 years old, she skis mm -hmm. three times a week. And she had a little bit of back pain, so she came and we got her back fixed, we got her knees fixed, and she said, thanks. And she's back to skiing three times a week. Okay, But she didn't have a, I'm ready to stop kind of an attitude. Right? She's saying, get me fixed, let's go back to it. And 83, I'm still skiing. So in her case, she didn't wait until it got so bad that I can't anymore. She said, I want to continue, so fix me, let's get on with life. That was her frontal lobe integrity, though. She wanted that. She desired that. But so often, what do we give up at certain points in our life because of pain with joint position perception, right? Well, it hurts when I ride horses now, so I don't ride horses anymore. It hurts me to ride in the car. I don't like to go for long rides anymore. It hurts me when I try to take a, a lid off of my canning jars. I'm not going to can anymore. It hurts me just to even put something in the oven and cook for my family or even stand at the sink and wash dishes or scrub vegetables. Whatever the case may be, what is changing this perception and this outlook? What is allowing me to or not to function at an optimal level anymore? Okay, So that's what we're looking at. Now here's the neat thing about this. In the morning, when everybody put their stocking on or their flip-flop or whatever you did, have you thought about the fact that your stocking was on again today? Not unless it got bunched up underneath your toes and I just said stocking, right? Or this morning when you put your wristwatch on or when you put your wedding ring on or when you put your earrings in or you put your glasses on your face or put your glasses on top of your head. After you put it there, isn't it amazing how quickly we forget that it's there? But the interesting thing is, the brain is still getting the feedback to the thalamus. But the thalamus is deciding whether or not to project the fact that, hey, look, your eyeglasses, silly, are right there on your face. Okay? Because you only needed that on there long enough to be able to perceive, yep, there are my glasses. I'm happy. I can see. And once I can see, I go about my day and I don't even think about it again because it doesn't come to my cognitive awareness. The thalamus is still perceiving it. Okay, The eyes are still receiving information. But what happens when the eyes can no longer gate or get the information to be able to be, in essence, filtered through? Then we start to see other demises in the body. Okay, or other inabilities. Let me express it this way. A child who has attention deficit often will have a thalamus that is so overrun by information that when you ask them to be still and read, they're already so bombarded with the sounds, with touch, the clothing on their body, the autistic child that won't wear underwear, won't wear stockings, has to wear something like uh, loose-fitting gym pants, don't put a belt on me ever, Mom. Don't put stockings on me. It's going to drive me crazy. So they end up wearing flip-flops, right? When we see that, their thalamus is already summated to a high threshold that more information just makes me go crazy, okay? So they're unable to gate that information. So sometimes what we have to actually do is use a filter at the eyes to be able to gate some of that information or filter out some of that background noise, if you will, or all that color, so that the brain isn't so bombarded by all this information. And now he can say, oh, I can read that. That's easy. I'll sit here and read for a half an hour. Okay. So sometimes you'll see color therapies that are used for some of these kids. But when we look at the brain, again, if the frontal lobe is constantly being summated or stimulated, then we may end up with such things as light sensitivities with migraine headaches, okay? Visual spots before the headache comes on. So sometimes that migraine, migraine episode is similar to this overstimulation of thalamus and consequently then what's coming to the frontal lobes is this too much information and the brain says, whoa, pain, go put me in a dark room, shut off the lights, leave me alone. 
got to stay here for a couple hours and recover. Okay?